Stylers and welcome back to the Full Style E channel for another video. Today's video is going to be showing how I created these beautiful, glamorous, dope corset tops. So we're going to be starting off with pattern. I went ahead and traced a corset that I had um, making a mock-up out of some sheets. And I'm taking that and I'm making an, a pattern. So the mock-up has me cut, sewn together, tried on, fitted, and now I'm going to make a pattern from that. And if you want to see how I did this, um, be sure to like and leave a comment in the comments below and let me know that you're interested in seeing a breakdown how I trace, copy, um, and make mock-ups and then patterns of my clothing. And I'm just putting all the necessary markings and measurements on my pattern. All right, moving on, we have our pattern pieces. There are only three. Um, and then we have our fabric. Um, we have this beautiful satin, shiny, um, heavyweight green fabric. And then we have this blue, stretchy, almost um, jersey knit material. So I'm going to be making two corsets. I'm just laying out my fabric on the fold because two of the pieces can be cut on the fold, the front and the back. And then you need two side pieces. And then from there, you can decide if you want to put it in a zipper or hook and eye closure or um, eyelets. I went with a zipper for the green. The blue is stretchy enough that I didn't need to put in any closure. It's just all one solid piece. Um, because I didn't have a lot of the blue fabric, I wasn't able to cut the straps all in one go. So you can see me here just measuring out about 20 inches long and about um, 4 inches wide for the straps for the blue corset that are going to be cut and attached later. With the green fabric, I had over three yards, had more than enough fabric to work it. I still have fabric left. Um, I'm going to um, bring down my front top a little bit so that I'm able to cut my straps all in one piece. I do wish I would have did with the blue one because having the straps and that binding, the, the bias tape, kind of looks a little wonky as a finished project. But I'm going to revisit that later in the video. But you can see me here just cutting the straps and that front um, bodice piece all in one go. And this is a, a complete optional. You can cut your straps separate and sew them on or you can cut them like this. So we have this our dark navy blue fabric. I love it. It's stretchy. It's amazing. But it's dull. It's just, I want, it's the holidays. I want a little something, mm, something more. So I had an idea. I had an idea. And I purchased a stencil. And I didn't just get any stencil. I got this lace stencil. Okay, so I tested it out because I had a theory of how I wanted this to look. So this is done with just simply brushing back and forth over the lace stencil. And this half is going to be blah, blah, blah. Again. I love the dry brush back and forth because it gives it almost that worn texture look as if it's like, you know, um, it's been worn for a while. It's not just like straight on print. Um, I like that look a little bit more. Now, with using the dark fabric, I started off with just a simple black. This is the paint I got. And you can barely see it, right? You see a little sparkle, but it's like, what, what is going on? I don't want it to look like, you know, a mistake. I want it to look purposeful. So I added a little bit of white. And then a little bit of this metallic 
silver because the white kind of just takes it kind of just spreads around the, the glitter the metallic in it and it doesn't look as glittery so I tried it on the other side now again this is when I simply just dry brush it over and then this is when I blot it in like I take the brush and I'm like right I don't like the blot because the blot you see what it does ain't a fan of that I like the dry brush so the goal is we want this silver color um, however I don't have a lot of this silver color because this is from projects many years ago um, because we want it to be light like this but I have a lot of black so I'm going to add as much of the silver as I can and then add the black to darken up a little bit and bump up the metallic and if it's too dark I'm going to add a little bit of the white but remember the white kind of pulls away some of the metallicness of the paint so gonna be gentle with the white. Alright guys, we're just gonna mix paint. Like I said, I'm going heavy with the silver because that's the color I actually want and I'm adding in that black just to make more of the paint as well as to bump up the glitter and I am doing like a brush dry stroke. Uh, it does start off a little heavy when you first dip into the paint but once you go back and forth it kind of evens and smooths out so there are parts where it's a little bit more heavily saturated but I do love how it looks you can see me here mentioning that I really need to go in into the middle part um, it has smaller cutouts so the paint kind of misses so you will see me just going back and forth on that middle to make sure that I really get that defined. I really love how this turned out and looks. It doesn't look perfect. I wasn't trying to get it clean and neat because I know me, that's not really um, a skill set. I wasn't trying to perfect it. So I went with the messy, chaotic, worn, antique look and I love how that came out. So I'm going to do this to all um, four pieces of my corset in the blue material. So the front bodice piece, the two sides, and the back bodice piece. So just going to sew up the side seam. Seam allowance because when I made my uh, pattern for my mock-up, I did I add additional seam allowance which in hindsight is a bit too much because the corset does stretch this material does stretch so there is a little bit too much room so in the future I will be going in and taking away some of those inches and now it's time for me to chart out where I want my my channels my um my channels to go my uh yeah my bony I have some zip ties here and I don't have the long ones so I'm gonna have to double up on zip ties I have some zip ties here that I got from Amazon um I'm going to have to double up on phony, which I am not super happy about. Um, trying to see how these skinny people have it. It's one way. And I say skinny people, I need to stop me. Ooh, it's a corset blazer. That's, that's cute. Um, that's just standard. I feel like for me, I'm going to need a little bit more cinched. Um, I like this one right here. 
I feel like I'm going to put one in the middle or I want to do like that. Like they're following the coming from down here and going outward. So like boom and then boom. Or I can do one in the middle. Two in the middle. Two on each side. Maybe two on this side. All right. Um, I after going through Pinterest and finding how I wanted the um, the the bony and the lines to place I decided to do two in the center front so they're not exactly at the front they're um, lined up right next to each other two going um, diagonally towards the side that would curve around my bust and my sides and then later on went back and did two on the side panels the two side panels so there's all together i had to uh mark out cut sew pin uh, insert um 10 different channels and zip ties for the bony and with the green i only did the six in the front i didn't worry about the side but you can see me here just making sure that um, they are evenly, disport, evenly disputed on each side. So I'm going in with my ruler and double checking the measurements of where it starts and where it ends. Um, so that it is era, mirror images of each other on the other side. And I'm really excited and liking how it turned out. Just double checking my markings. Okay, you can see me here uh, measuring out a strip of material that I cut um, probably for the bias. And I needed to see how wide I needed to make the strips. After some further research and problem solving, I decided to cut one inch strips for the binding. So you can see me here measuring out the strips and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. And I didn't worry um, about how long to make them because they're all going to be different lengths because of the way the corset is shaped. Okay, so after I had the strips cut, I went ahead and started pinning down the strips to the corset, um, lining up. Uh, the individual uh, strips with their coordinating marks um, and I decided how I was going to sew these strips down. Now the two strips in the front are like mirror average mirror images of each other so they're going to be sold down um, right down the middle and then they're going to be folded in to like bump up against each other if that's making any sense i wish i had better control over my camera angles and i can really zoom in and show you guys what i'm talking about so the first strip is going to be sewn on the left side. The second one is going to be sewn on the right side. They're going to be folded over and they're going to be sewn down so that they're like um, bumping up against each other. And then the ones on the left side of the corset are going to be folded over. 
you can see me here with my camera flashlight trying to give you guys light and give me guys light. The lighting in my dining room is terrible as well as I, like I said, I really wish um, I can wait till I'm able to give you guys more camera angles and um, um, views of what I'm doing. I realize that my pin cushion, my hand, and my arm gets in the way a lot. Um, but hopefully you guys understanding what I'm doing. I have them all following a certain order. So they're all being sewn down a certain way, rolled over, and um, top this down a certain way. So you're going to sew it down to attach it to the corset. Roll it over, hiding away the ends. Sew that down. And then you're going to sew the other side of the tubing down. Almost like when you're doing elastic casing, you want to sew in the tubing. And you can see me here just repeating that process on the green material. Um, you want to be careful that each side that you are stitching of this um, casing is straight and even. If you veer over too much, um, you would end up closing off a little area and it's gonna be difficult for you to get your uh, zip ties through. I ran into that problem. So here I am with my zip ties. Um, I have the eight, eight inch zip ties that I just order a pack from Amazon. So I end up having to double up on length and I also doubled up on thickness because those flimsy zip ties have me feeling some type of way and I just wanted to be real secure and not afraid that one I was going to pop snap if I bent over or moved around. So now you can see me here cutting two inch strips of binding. I'm not sorry, two inch strip of bias that will be bias tape for the finishing off all of the raw edges in him for my corset top. I did the same thing for the blue material, but unfortunately that wasn't cut on the bias because I didn't have enough fabric to do that. But with the green, I have more than enough. And if you know what I'm watching, Shout it out in the comments below and we can be friends. I definitely had to rewatch this because I wanted to get into the like the little spin-off series. Definitely enjoyed watching this. All right, I'm sewing together the ends of my bias tape um, on the diagonal and cutting off that access. And I didn't go ahead and try to iron this material and create a clean, um, sharp finish, which I should have took the time, but I just really wanted to get this project done. I am going to be investing in one of those bias tape kits where they have like the little, um, I don't even know what it's called. The little tube that will help you glide the fabric through, folds in it itself, and so you can just iron and press it. I'm getting one of those. So the next time you guys see me use bias tape, I'm gonna have one of those because trying to do bias tape by hand is the devil. So, Putting right sides together with the bias tape, you're going to put that right up against the bottom of the corset or item you're working with. Putting that right side together, you're going to um, sew along that bottom edge. You can see me here sewing down that bottom edge of the corset and bias tape before I go ahead folding it um, down and under. And now I'm doing a top stitch or a stitch in the ditch method of just sewing it down and finish and clean off that edge. Um, flipping it uh, wrong side up. I am folding over and I am just evenly trying to get it smooth as possible. 
fists and what it is, would have been um, ironed and folded correctly, would have came into help. But I'm just going to pin down, um, use as many pins as possible for it to lay as flat as possible. It's not perfect, but it looks good. I'm happy with it. But in the future, I definitely will be creating bodice tape or trying to find um, a color as close to what I'm using as possible. I do the same thing with the blue corset, but I only use the binding in the front um, along the um, neckline and the bodice of the corset. And I just do a simple rollover, um, tuck and roll hem um, along the sides, back, and the um, straps. And you can see me here with the green um, corset, just doing that simple roll and tuck hem, finishing off the sides and the back and the straps. Okay, with the green corset, I went ahead and put in a zipper. I have this cute, fun, metallic glitter gold zipper. But once I was done and tried it on, the zipper actually kind of gave it a little bit more space than what I needed. I wanted these to be a little bit more fitted and tight on me. So in the future, I'm going to go back and remove the zipper. I did show it on camera because it was too cold to take off my blazer and you don't really need it. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm so excited how these come out. They're not perfect, but for my first try, I think I did a good job. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys are staying encouraged, safe, warm, and remembering that you are blessed and you have made it. Love you guys so, so very much, but always remember to love yourself fully. Until next time. Happy holidays!